Well, it's being hailed as a potential game changer in the fight against one of the world's deadliest diseases. A promising new vaccine against malaria has proven 77% effective in trials. That's the first time ever malarial vaccine has topped the World Health Organization's goal of a jab that's at least 75% effective. The shot was developed by the team behind the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine and tested on 450 infants in Burkina Faso. The scientists will now move to a so-called phase three trial involving nearly 5,000 children across four African countries. I'm now joined by Dr. Richard Bukala, professor at Yale School of Medicine in Connecticut. He's also the developer of another new possible vaccine for malaria. Doctor, thanks for joining uh, DW. We have recently heard a lot about the RNA vaccines against COVID-19. How did these new vaccines work against malaria, including the one you've developed? Thank you, Michael. The vaccine that we are working on, which is still preclinical, it's an animal testing, take, takes advantage of a gene that we discovered about 10 years ago that's produced by the malaria parasite that acts to suppress the immune response to the parasite. And so our vaccine takes advantage of this protein product called PMIF, mm. and by vaccinating against it, the host can clear the infection on its own. And we combined this vaccine antigen with a new type of RNA called self-amplifying RNA. In many ways, it's a second generation of the mRNA vaccines currently used for COVID because it persists at the injection site for about six to eight weeks. So you can inject very small amounts. It can pre be produced much more quickly at much lower cost. One can make about a million human doses in a liter of synthetic cell-free fluid. Mm. So it would be potentially much easier to distribute much less expensive, and it could be produced at sites around the world uh, in a malaria-affected countries. Mm. And as, as we've seen with this whole COVID issue, uh, distribution and production is a very important facet of all of this. Why is RNA technology so important in the fight against malaria? A lot of that has to do with the economics of vaccine development and distribution. Uh, as many of my colleagues like to say, vaccines don't prevent infection, vaccinations do. Mm. And so one needs a vaccine, particularly for a global problem like malaria, that is low cost, can be rapidly produced and deployed uh, to sites that need it most. So it's all about economics. In many ways, the RNA platform is, is a unforeseen benefit of the tragedy of the COVID epidemic because now the world is ready for this type of platform. We only have about 30 seconds or so, doctor, but i um, very curious, when will these vaccines be available to people? So as I mentioned, our vaccine, it's not in human testing. Um, as the Oxford vaccine you led the story with, we are in animal testing. Um, we are hoping that within two years, uh, we can work uh, toward beginning phase one testing in human subjects. Got it. That's a Dr. Richard Bucala, professor at Yale School of Medicine. Many thanks for making time for DW, sir. Thank you very much.